Welcome back. Last time we explored Undernets 10 and 11, we faced off against an old and new boss, and we got a couple chips along the way. Today we're going to explore the final area of the Undernet. Now, before we proceed any further, a couple of things that I forgot to mention. Regarding Shadow Man, the condition for him to actually appear as a boss is that, well, of course, you have to beat the game first, you must be level 70, and you need to have at the very least 140 chips in your library. So if you're exploring the area and he's not showing up, you may be either missing some levels or some chips. Other than that, he supposedly can also use the Muramasa chip as an attack, but I tried, I fought against him many times and i never seen him do it, so I don't know if that's quite the case. And one other thing, regarding Dropdown and Leaf Shield as well. I showed you how I obtained them via Sharkman and all that. You can also use other chips that don't necessarily target all enemies at the same time, meaning Navi chips that targets all enemies at the same time. For example, I was able to actually get an S rank against uh, Dropdown and fi Fire Aura by using uh, Dino Wave and two Skullmans. If you are fast enough, like once you're done with the first animation for the first Skullman and you start mashing the uh, button for the second chip, you might get them in just the exact uh, moment that the game will still count that as a double delete. So you can do that as well for the uh, Cyclone and Leaf Shield, though you will need to uh, weaken the Leaf Shield by 40 damage, so a middle level charge shot should do it. But yeah, it's not that difficult, though I would still say that it is incredibly hard to obtain drop down and leaf shield. Anyways, let's head on to the next, to the final area. So, you made it this far. It's a shame you're wasted on the outside world. A final trial awaits the true hero. If that's you, then you'll soon find out what that is. Quite ominous, and we'll soon find out exactly what he means. So in this area we have a couple new enemies, but also a few old ones, so I will be skipping any old encounters. Okay, new enemy. Also, in case you hadn't figured it out by now, just by looking at the sidebar, this is the one other area where you can actually find uh, the wood virus. The wood aura virus. I don't think I'm getting any chip here. And I actually did. So, that iron body is actually far more important than you think. But anyways, let's go over that new enemy. It is of course the final version of Gaia. It deals 160 damage, so fantastic chip. Other than that, as you saw, it can drop iron body and unlock, un unlike Ga Gaia 1 and 2, which dropped iron body Q, he drops iron body C, which is very important for an in-game trade that I'll go into more detail later. Also you can get Night Sword C, there's one other chip that you can get as a uh, mystery data in this area that I'm hoping we'll find. And also a new enemy. Also when I just said mystery data I meant, uh, I meant green mystery data. There's also a, one, a very important one as a blue mystery data. Chip. That's fine though, because the chip that you get from that enemy is lock on 3, which I already had. I got it by accident while I was using the chip trader to get some of the escape chips back. Anyways, lock on 3. It is of course stronger than lock on 2, it will deal a quite decent amount of damage and it is rather fast, so not a bad chip at all.
This is technically not a new enemy, but I do want to show this fight. Something that I think I said regarding the Raton virus the first time we encountered him is that his movement is quite erratic. That's not quite the case, you can kinda control where he moves. Similar to other enemies such as the Invis and Fire Tower, Aqua Tower, it will avoid uh, facing you directly, so you can kinda trick him into a good position. Such as right then. So we didn't get any chips, but I want to quickly address the Raton 3, all the chips as a whole. We already have one code, and we can get three more from fighting them here, and also as a mystery data, as a green mystery data, you can get the final code, meaning that we have access to two new program advances. And those are uh, Sera Raton 3, which of course will allow you to spam the Raton 3 chips for 5 seconds, and you're immune to any and all damage during that time. And of course, Omega Raton 3, which will allow you to do the same only for 10 seconds. It's pretty good. Also, when I talked about the Gaia chip, I forgot to mention that we can now get, uh, farm Gaia 3C, which is the final component for a program advance, one of the special series. It is called Heavy Stamp. It requires Gaia's 1, 2, and 3 with the same code, that being C and Quake 3C. The way it works is that Mega Man will stomp on an enemy with a gigantic uh, weight, basically. It will deal 400 damage. It is quite strong, but of course it only targets one enemy, so keep that in mind. So I believe this is one of the blue mystery datas. Yeah, 20,000 semis. There's nothing here, I don't know why I went this way. So right here. This blue mystery data is very important, and as soon as you obtain it, something is going to change in this area. And we've got Hero Sword Eye. So, let's go over the chip first. Hero Sword, it is the stronger version of Night Sword. It has the exact same range, but it deals 200 damage, so fantastic chip. Now, there has been a small change done to this area. However, before I show you that, there's something that I want to address. Hero Sword is technically the final component of that missing program advance, my favorite in the in Battle Network 1. But we don't quite have the correct code. In order to get it, we actually need to jack out, so let's do just that. If you recall, last time that we were at the uh, government complex, I talked about two uh, in-game trades, but I said that we didn't have all the necessary components. Well, now we do, so let's go ahead and do them real quick. My girlfriend said she wants cute chips. All I have is this wood aura C. She'll get mad if I give her this. I don't suppose I don't sub you trade this chip for an Imbis 2J, a Cloud SK, and a Roton 3L? Please? So I already showed you how to get the um, the wood aura C, so the wood aura chip. But if you're having trouble, there is this in-game trade to help you out. Also, uh, in one of those fights that I skipped, I did get a Raton 3L, so I already had it. Thanks so much, you saved me! Now my girlfriend cannot resist me! And we got Wood or C. we didn't really need it, but we have it now. So, for the final trade, we need to head to the waterworks section. I know that I don't look like one. But I'm a net battler. There are a few chips that I'm looking for. 
Woodman 3W, Skullman 3S, Sharkman 3S, Drop Down B and Iron Body C. If you give me those chips, I'll give you a top secret one. What do you say? So he requires some rather high level Navi chips. Iron Body C, which is annoying, and Drop Down, which is a nightmare. So what are we getting in exchange? Fantastic, thanks. This will help with those nasty viruses. Okay, now don't tell anyone that I gave you this. And we got Hero Sword B. So, we have all the necessary components for the final program advance. Now, I could just show it to you as I do for any other program advance in this Let's Play, but that's no fun. So, I think we need to find a proper opponent. And that opponent is actually waiting for us in Undernet 12. So I'm going to quick uh, make a quick cut here because I'm not going to I'm going to spare you the trouble of seeing me walk all the way there. So I'll see you guys in a moment. And here we are. So before we do anything else, I wanted to mention that I did change up my folder a bit. You may notice that it's completely full of code B chips. Most of these are simply because it will make it easier to access the program advance, but some are for have more of a specific reason. Bubble wrap will come in handy in the upcoming fight. Mine trees because I needed something with a code B. Big bomb is useful, and to be perfectly honest, snake egg, I put it in simply because it was code B. So the secret boss of Undernet 12 unfortunately only appears as a random encounter not from a specific designated spot. Because of that, I'm just going to be walking around until I find him, and of course I will be skipping any and all random fights. Hopefully this will not take long. Okay, finally. So, the secret boss of Undernet 12, base.exe. A couple of things to say about him. If you pay attention, he has 1000 HP, and also he has a number 100 above that, similar to the one that the live virus had. He has a barrier, but it is not an aura. That barrier will be destroyed after it takes 100 damage, but it accumulates, so in theory, you could defeat him entirely by using your Buster Shot. Aside from that, he has a basic attack, which is very fast and it deals a decent amount of damage, and three different charge attacks. I'm going to try and show them all. Okay, so that's the basic attack. And that's, that is one of the charge attacks. Probably the easiest to avoid. Also, he does have iframes, he will only activate them whenever he takes 100 damage or more. Okay, let's see here. I am slightly tempted to go for add because I do want to get the components for the program advance, but one whole turn without anything to protect from him is rather tricky, but let's try. Okay, again the same charge attack. Just do this to clear out some chips. Okay, that's a new attack. And rather tricky and annoying.
Also, whenever he uses a charge attack, he will remove the barrier. Okay, so he has used two of the charge attacks, he's still missing one. Almost there. We almost have it. So ridiculously fast. Okay, we have it. He hasn't shown the other charge attack, but I'll just show it to you once we're done with the fight. I don't want to take any more risks. It's time. Okay, so of course that was a dreadful performance, but then again, I was stalling to get the program advanced. The folder setup that I had is not the best when dealing with base.exe. Also, base, unlike a Ferroman, Shadowman, and Magic Man, in the first encounter, you're not guaranteed to get a chip from him. But he can drop one very specific chip, so let's go into detail about that one. The chip that he drops is called Life Aura, as in exactly the Life Aura. It will create an aura around you that has no elemental weaknesses and it will only be destroyed if you take damage that is 100 or, or higher. Which sadly, at this point, most enemies deal that much damage, even if you have an armor that cuts damage in half, so it is more like a bragging right chip, not particularly useful. Also, I'll show you on screen real quick what is the uh, charge attack that he never used. That one is rather tricky to avoid, but you can find some gaps. You could say that it is arguably the toughest one to avoid, though the pink one that he used, when it goes very fast, it's incredibly difficult to, uh, to avoid as well. But yeah, that is pretty much everything when it comes to, well, the internet. Those are all the chips, not much else to show, really. So I think this is enough for now. Next time we'll go into, well, more of a bonus episode, go into a bit of the history of this game in particular and the series as a whole. Thank you for watching.